Hi everyone, Chris here with another Janssen Art Center video. Thank you Janssen Art Center for giving me this opportunity. I was inspired, well really inspired by Jesse Rasmussen's plate video to show off my studio. It's a very humble studio that me and my wife also use uh, as an office. I work from home and I was hoping that when I show off such a very small space that it could show anyone else out there, you don't need to have this awesomely amazing huge studio with wonderful crazy lighting and big space to make art. You can do it anywhere. Doesn't even need to be in a studio, doesn't need to be inside really, it could be anywhere. So let's take a look around my studio. Okay, first we'll start where I left off. Those are a couple paintings that I finished a while back. And this is the corner of the studio where all of my art setup is. Uh, I like to keep my paintings up so that I can review them and look at them as much as possible, learn from them, improve on them in all kinds of ways. Um, here's my very small easel with my bag full of art materials, paints and things like that. Very simple. You know, not much to it. The easel, easel is very mobile. It can get me around uh, current drawing I'm working on right now and the drawing board that I featured in my last video. Here is art books, a whole shelf full of art books <laughs> that I read um, and review on my website or will be doing more than anything. And then a whole bunch of, you know, art supplies, you know, different assortment of brushes, tapes, gesso, um, a pan that I use or a plastic tub that I use for wet brushes. They'll sit in like an oil that never dries so that I don't have to wash my brushes every day and then a brush washer. And then the all-important wire rack for paintings that are either drawing or just drawings that I've finished that I have kind of sitting there that I don't like. You know, I got probably about a hundred or so drawings there uh, that I haven't done anything with. All kinds of sketchbooks, things like that. Uh, more books here. These aren't art books. These are just different related books. Another painting that I'm in the progress of working on. Probably won't finish that one. And as we come around here, this looks more like an office. So this is my this is my actual workspace. I normally work in front of my computer and me and my wife's uh, desk is connected and there's my chair. It's very, very simple. I usually sit in the chair and look at any reference material from my computer monitor and draw and paint from there, which hopefully I can show you some a bit more later. And then this is my board of ideas that I go through, kind of the whiteboard, very humble whiteboard for things that I, I got planned that I'm doing. And then in my closet, I got stacks and stacks of foam core and all kinds of drawing paper, canvases, things like that. Oh, there's my tripod that I've built and some paintings that I've worked on. There's an older painting that I did. You can see it on my website also. But yeah, this is my studio, very, very small space slash office. So let's check out, oh, there's my cat too. One of my kitties. <laughs> so now let's check out some warm up materials or warm up for drawing next. Okay, here I am at my desk with my drawing board. Again, this is just a half inch piece of foam core, super light. I love this as a drawing board. Some clips holding my paper, could be any paper. This is 18 by 24 sheets of newsprint, very cheap paper. For this exercise I'm gonna show you, it's a warm up exercise. I would suggest using the cheapest paper you can find because really that's all you need. And why, why do we do a warm up exercise? Well. We want to treat our art making as if we are an athlete. You know, take, have as much seriousness, so importance on our art making as an athlete does to warm up and make sure that they're in the right space, head and body to actually create. 
you know, what they want to create, this kind of thing. So I'm going to show you some quick warm-up exercise, uh, exercises that I do. Uh, most of the time before I start warming up, I usually never show it on my website, but yeah, it really helps you get loose. And the other thing about warming up is it really helps with your dexterity. The ability to actually put the lines on the page where you want them is, you know, a huge portion of actually drawing. You're not going to be able to draw too well if you can't put, you know, what you want where you want, when you want it. So this will help with your dexterity. So it's a very simple exercise. Hopefully you can see everything well. Yeah, I think so. And we're gonna start with a very small circle in the center of the page. Very small circle. That's what we start with. And usually when you do these circles, uh, when I do them, I try to make them one single line and as circular as possible, this is part of the dexterity, trying to make a circle, I mean, a perfect circle really with one line. It's hard, challenging. If you don't do it, totally cool. We got more practice for it. So a little circle, then we're gonna do a big circle on the outside of it, really big. I mean, get, get your whole arm into this. There we go. And <laughs> didn't do too well on that. A little bit nervous making the video. Every time I look at this, where we got a little circle and a large circle, I like to imagine that this is normally where we are throughout our art making inside this little circle and everything outside of it. This is our, um, this is us getting out of our comfort zone. Here we are in our little comfort zone and this is us getting out of our comfort zone. It puts me in a nice mind space to make sure that I'm always challenging myself with my art making. And this is what we're going to do here. We're going to do a bunch of ovals, okay? And all we're going to do is sometimes I'll ghost them, you know, so I'm practicing the movement before I actually put my pencil on the page. So I'll practice an oval. And, and the purpose here is I want the oval to start at this point in the small circle and end at some point there. So we have con some constraints here. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. I, I started it there and ended it there just almost perfectly. That was pretty nice. It doesn't happen that often, but when you get those, you can feel good about it. So then we'll, we'll do another one on another side. Ooh, see that one was off. That's cool. Now we're going to, we're going to start moving around the interior of this circle, cr creating these ovals and still trying to hit each line. Now the importance of doing these different angles with those ovals is, you know, I'm right-handed and it's easy for me to do this oval here. It kind of works with the shape of my body, my right arm, you know, ability, this kind of thing. So that one's easy. But this one at this angle is a lot harder. So we're going to get outside of our comfort zone again and we're going to try to do ovals in angles that we're not used to and this is definitely going to improve our dexterity and you'll find the more you do these ovals you'll have to kind of contort your body or change your body position to make sure that you get that oval in the right place I'm, con I'm constantly moving my whole arm, my shoulder, my elbow, sometimes my whole upper body. Now I'm sitting when I do this. I think standing would be even harder, but you don't have to do it standing. This is my normal position when I draw. I'm always sitting or when I paint, I just like to sit. And there we go, we made a flower of all these ovals and we're training our dexterity. Now we're going to continue with this, but now we're going to transition into circles. But first we need some lines. We need some boxes. We need some constraints. It's like Alan Watts says, uh, tennis is fun on a court. So life is fun when we have constraints. Can you imagine playing football that there wasn't any constraints? It probably wouldn't be that fun. These games that we watch on TV, these sports that 
we'll hopefully watch again soon as soon as the COVID-19 thing is done. It's always fun because they're in constraints. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put um, we're going to put these circles into some constraints and have some fun with them and challenge ourselves again. So I made some straight lines here. Well, somewhat straight. And that's another quality we want to work on is trying to get some straight fluid lines one slash across, you know, not a jagged line, not a slow uh, searching line, just let's flow it across as straight as we can. Now I'm going to just make circles inside these lines. And again, I'm going to try and hit the top and the bottom without going out or too far in. Ooh. See, I got some space there, but let's try again. Okay, not so bad. And I'm trying to get like perfect circles here. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm always focusing, probably not too well right now since I'm recording a video, but I'm trying to focus on getting this right. Every single circle I do, and I overlap these also. I mean, the paper is cheap but I still want to get as much out of it as I can. And we're going to do circles on both sides. Again, they're easier over here, harder over there for me. Now, if you're left-handed, probably be easier on this side and harder on that side because I have to come across my body. So this is a physical thing, not only creative, but physical. Again, I'm staying within inside of those constraints. Sometimes the circles are bigger because the space is bigger. Sometimes it's smaller. Now we got kind of a flag shape. We really tested a lot of our abilities just with these simple lines and kind of getting our whole arm ready to do things like gestures or any kind of drawing. The next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go very geometric now. We're going to go with straight lines. This is another very important exercise, and I'm going to work down here, so I'm moving my board up, is we want to train how well we can deal with horizontal and vertical lines. So I'm going to try and do some perfect horizontal lines here. And as I'm doing these, I'm trying to make them as perfectly horizontal as I can, one single line with the same space in between each one. And I don't know if you can tell, but my whole upper torso is getting involved in this one. It's like I'm trying to create a page full of lines, like a, a ruled, a vertical ruled page. Now the vertical for me, those aren't too hard. I mean, that, that's pretty close. I mean, I got some good vertical lines here. And this really helps when you're trying to do comparative measurement. So you look at, at being able to understand what a vertical looks like over an image and, and project that vertical line on an image to see, you know, if the eyeball actually, uh, this, the iris of the eyeball meets the side of the nose in, in some instance, or, you know, where is the head in relation to the knee? You know, you drop those plumb lines, those vertical lines. So this is really helpful. And if you're drawing, you know, geometric uh, uh, items, it's good to be able to just like hit those vertical lines really quickly and nice. Now we're going to work on horizontal. We're basically going to make a graph paper out of this, but we're going to challenge it. Now, it's hard enough just going from the outside line to the outside line on a perfect vertical. These are hard for me. Ooh, that was kind of at a slant, and I didn't make it all the way to the end, so let's try again. There you go. Now, if I was going really slow on this, I could probably do this really well, you know, it would meet perfectly, but that's not that's not the purpose of this. We want to be able to do this in a fluid gestural motion. So here we go, all the way over. And that's where the training comes in. Those are the constraints that we're working with. Now to make this even more fun and challenging is we can change up what line we end at. 
So we always begin here, but let's end at, you know, the third from the end line. Oh, almost got that one right on. Third from the end, second from the end, maybe the fourth. So, wow, that was really unstraight. <laughs> You'll find, wow, that was really crooked too. I'm bad at this. I need to practice more. You'll find that when you're drawing things anywhere, and if you're trying to get some emotion and some energy into it, there's a beginning and an end to a line that you make. And you have to hit those points pretty closely, probably not as close as here. But here we're going for perfection, uh, and we'll hopefully we'll end up as an expert with it. We'll never reach perfection, but we're, we're going to go for it and hopefully reach excellence. Excellence, that's the word I was looking for. So I still have lots of space on the page left over. And normally what I do here is I practice certain things such as um, gestural lines. So I do a lot of S curves, you know, just simple S's. And then I'll switch them around so it's a real S. So this is a real S. <laughs> that was a Z. <laughs> this kind of thing. Different things. So I'm really just kind of moving my arm. And, you know, because I'm doing the video, this is taking a lot longer than normal. Usually I can bust one of these out in less than five minutes. I can go through the whole process. A lot of things I'll do is maybe I'll do a Loomis head. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Andrew Loomis but he's got a specific way of constructing the head. Ooh, it's a jaw line. There's that line, that line, there, there, that kind of thing. I need to review the Loomis head again, but sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll, you know, depending on what I'm working on, I actually have a figure displayed up in front of me here. And sometimes I can go in, you know, find a place on the page and work on, you know, the, the arm of the figure, you know, uh, this kind of thing. I'm not showing the figure right now because I'm not sure about um, nudity, that kind of thing. And I love to do lots of figure drawing and figure and life drawing class, but right now we're not doing any life drawing. So I go with imagery and um, a bonus suggestion, New Masters Academy online. Um, I think it's nmaart.com. Wonderful for imagery. You do have to pay for it though, but it is a wonderful thing. And so I try to fill up spaces on this page with just random practices, just moving my arm, just having fun, just letting go. A lot of times I'll add in breathing, some breathing exercises for what I'm doing. I'll check my posture, make sure that I'm doing everything I can to be safe. That's kind of a figure there, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that is um, my warm up exercise. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, I'm using this is oh, that one's that one's sharpened way down. So you can't see but actually, those are the kind of points I use. If you're going to use a drawing pencil, or a pencil to draw, which I love. Um, this is a purpose for it. You can really sharpen it down into a point, and this will allow you to really work the side or the tip, get all kinds of variation in your line. You're basically creating a paintbrush with a pencil, you know, by doing this. Never uh, just use them as they come out of the box. Always create, you know, the um, I guess the point that works best for your creative ability. So anyway, these are Conte of Paris. I like these a lot for just this type of drawing. Uh, you can use any uh, B pencil, honestly. I have some really soft, like here's a 6B pencil. I mean, those are really good too for any of this. Uh, the 6Bs or graphite is wonderful in, in any way because it comes off a bit easier. I like this because it's charcoal. It gets really dark. Um, hopefully you can see it. It looks like you can. But anyway, so that's my warm-up exercise that I try and do every time before I draw. Thank you.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the warm-up exercise that I did right here. Yeah, I know it looks like nothing, but you know what? Uh, the ability you gain physically with being able to do this and just the mind state that you put yourself into before you do your art, whether it's painting or anything, you can do a warm-up exercise either in canvas with a brush or drawing, anything like that. Hope you enjoyed it. If you get a chance, uh, look at my website, cbevan.com. I have... I draw in there every day. I got all kinds of books I review, that kind of thing. Also, Jansen Arts Center and the Wacom Arts Project. Super awesome. Thank you for doing it during the, the crisis with COVID-19 right now and giving me the opportunity and everybody the opportunity to stay connected with the Jansen Arts Center. So thank you so much. And I hope to produce more of these videos soon. Be safe. Be healthy. Bye-bye.